Well, Donald Trump continues to fend off a series of sexual misconduct allegations brought against him. This comes on the heels of several reports released throughout the week in which a number of women are accusing the GOP nominee of unwanted groping and kissing. Errol Barnett has been following the campaign. By the way, these teleprompters haven't been working for the last 20 minutes. At a late night rally in North Carolina, an unshackled Donald Trump physically removed his teleprompters from the stage, looking past the latest in a slew of assault allegations against him. I love those signs, women for Trump. Because I actually think I'm doing well with women. In just about all cases, it's nonsense, it's false. And but I'm earlier in the day Friday, Donald Trump mocked the growing list of women who've accused him of unwanted sexual advances. Say, oh, I was with Donald Trump in 1980. I was sitting with him on an airplane. She would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Even disparaging his female opponent, referencing when they crossed paths at the last debate. And when she walked in front of me, believe me, I wasn't impressed. As Trump spoke, two more women went public with claims of their own, bringing the total number of alleged victims to six. This is the vivid part for me. One described an incident at a nightclub in New York. He did touch my vagina through my underwear. And the other, a former contestant on The Apprentice, described an experience in Los Angeles. I pushed his chest to put space between us, and I said, come on, man, get real. He repeated my words back to me get real as he began thrusting his genitals. Trump put out a statement denying ever meeting Summer Zervos at a hotel or greeting her inappropriately a decade ago. Donald Trump has, has asserted that all of these recent uh, unsubstantiated allegations are categorically false and I do believe it. Running mate Mike Pence told CBS this morning that Trump would have proof he's being falsely accused. I think even before, before the day is out, there'll be more evidence publicly that shows and calls into question these latest allegations. And Errol Burnett joins us now from our Washington Bureau. Errol, we know as recently as last week, Vice President Mike Pence was on CBS this morning saying that there's evidence, evidence refuting these sexual abuse allegations. Did they ever follow through with that? Uh, in a word, Rena, no. No concrete evidence has been presented by the campaign as of yet um, to counter what these women have claimed. But what the campaign is doing, we are seeing, is doing everything it can to discredit uh, the at least half dozen women who have stepped forward um, as much as they can. Donald Trump today saying uh, the woman on the plane, Jessica Leeds, who claimed that he, uh, he groped her, is just a, a crazy woman. She's a horrible woman um, and really saying very disparaging things about her. In fact, they released a statement on Friday from the cousin of, allegedly, the cousin of another um, alleged victim, Summer Zervos, and that statement from the cousin said says that she had nothing but glowing things to say about Mr. Trump for the past decade, and he assumes that her actions are nothing more than an attempt to regain the spotlight at Mr. Trump's expense. The campaign provided a witness to the New York Post to discredit Jessica Leeds' story, a man who claims that he was on the plane uh, back at the time and uh, says that it was, in fact, Jessica Leeds who was all over Mr. Trump. He said he has a perfect memory of an incident that happened more than 30 years ago, but it's problematic for the Trump campaign because female voters are key to winning any election. And in, part, in the past few weeks since the Access Hollywood tape where Trump bragged about sexually assaulting women and the debate, since that's happened, uh, Donald Trump um, has lost 12 p points with women who are 45 and older. Hillary Clinton now leading among suburban women by 27 percentage points. White women with a college degree have really fled the Trump campaign. Uh, he's lost 7%, 7 percentage points of support from them. So by discrediting women who claim to have been victims of sexual assault, this could be a final damaging blow to the Trump campaign with only 23 days to go before the election. It's when they should be making a closing argument, but instead they're on the defense claiming innocence on Mr. Trump's behalf, even though what he said on that Access Hollywood tape matches up with the allegations these many women are making. So the campaign is in a very tricky spot at this point. They're not presenting concrete evidence. They're simply doing what they can to discredit these women. Errol, you know how it gets very dirty, especially this part of the campaign trail. There's opposition research on both sides. 
Trump has been accusing Clinton's camp of pushing these stories. Is there any truth to that? Well, essentially what Donald Trump is doing is he is increasingly calling this a rigged election and he's pointing to the revelations inside the more than 10,000 emails released by WikiLeaks as proof. Now, it is not clear that those emails uh, e suggest or make any links to this election being rigged, but he is claiming that the media um, is in an alliance with uh, Hillary Clinton and is doing whatever it can to spread lies and uh, get her uh, the presidency. But the emails uh, contained, um, or I should say released by WikiLeaks, don't really, they're not the smoking gun that uh, Mr. Trump suggests that it is. And in fact, the Clinton campaign is pushing back today in a post on Medium and trying to really change the narrative rather than defend what is in these emails which show the inner workings of the campaign. They're pointing the finger back at Mr. Trump and saying essentially in this post, what did Trump know and when did he know it? Um, they essentially uh, summarize showing evidence from him at the debates, refusing to acknowledge that Russia is behind any of the hacks and refusing to acknowledge that it could possibly be a foreign um, entity trying to influence the election. And they say, uh, quote, our intelligence community has confirmed that Russia is trying to influence our election. Despite reportedly being briefed on this, Trump has continued to defend Putin and to reflect blame for Russia, in effect coddling a foreign adversary. And they end by saying, why is Trump protecting Putin by lying about Russia's role in these hacks? What did his campaign know? And when did they know it? Why won't he condemn this? So the Clinton campaign, rather than admitting that what's in the emails is true, rather than responding to uh, the comments made, like uh, Mrs. Clinton, uh, her Achilles heel, is having to apologize. And instead, they're pushing it back on Mr. Trump and saying, why won't he condemn the actions of a foreign nation? So as I say, in these final closing days, each side wants to be making a closing argument, um, but they are finding themselves having to really pivot and fight back uh, for every single vote, as Hillary Clinton now leads by at least seven percentage points nationally. So it's, uh, it's, it's getting very intense these last few weeks. You know, Errol, we've seen Hillary Clinton, whether it was when she was against president, running against President Obama or with Bernie Sanders in the primary, she gets these great leads and then she loses those leads. I'm wondering, do you think these WikiLeak emails will have any impact on the lead that she currently has right now leading up to election? Well, that's what's been interesting this entire campaign. I mean, Hillary Clinton, and many will describe her, even Democrats, is a flawed candidate. She's uh, been involved in politics for decades, and there's a, just a, a vast amount of, of, of work and evidence that people can criticize. But in any other election, this would be uh, the Republican nominee's election to win. It's very rare for a two-term president of one party uh, to keep his party in power for the following election. But Donald Trump, in ad-libbing, in taking missteps, in being very undisciplined by his own admission, I mean, even at yesterday's uh, uh, rally, he said, my advisors want me to read from the teleprompter and talk about your jobs coming back. Your jobs will come back. But now I want to talk about these sexual assault allegations. He is admittedly um, unhinged, and uh, he says the shackles have... have have broken off and allowing him to be free and he essentially changes the narrative of the media cycle. So rather than uh, criticizing Hillary Clinton and staying on message, he tends to go on tangents. And because of that, uh, an increasing number of American voters do not feel that he is fit to be president. In fact, in the most recent Fox News poll, um, Let's see, 49% of respondents felt that Donald Trump was not at all qualified to be president. So despite opinions on either candidate, despite agreeing or disagreeing with them on policy points, Donald Trump seems to have alienated himself by now with appearing to be uh, very thin-skinned, uh, very emotional, and responding very aggressively to any criticism, to the point now where half of Americans don't feel that he is fit at all to be president. It's unlikely that he'll be able to convince Americans that the person they've seen over the past 12 months is going to change in the next you know, 20 days, uh, but he could potentially do that if he sticks to what his advisors are trying to get him to do. Um, but this is why Hillary Clinton is really trying to lay low and have uh, President Barack Obama, First Lady Michelle Obama, Joe Biden, her surrogates out there making the message for her, because in a way, Donald Trump is um, undoing his own campaign. Errol Barnett from our CBS Bureau in Washington. Thanks, Errol. Sure.